Honda and GM today announcing a partnership to develop and build an autom autonomous vehicle. Honda will invest $2.75 billion in GM's cruise, cruise holdings over the next 12 years, with $750 million being invested immediately. The investment will give Honda a 5.7% stake in that GM cruise holdings business. Is this the beginning of similar partnerships uh, coming with other automakers? Uh, well, we'll discuss this with Bob Lutz, former GM vice chairman, and Jim Press, former president uh, of Toyota Motor North America and Chrysler. Bob, uh, I'll come to you first. Uh, I mean, w what's your view in terms of uh, how significant this is? There was a partnership already between these two automakers, but not in this area. No, that's true. Uh, GM and Honda have um, collaborated on other ventures that require a great deal of um, a great deal of a great deal of engineering, but not that much in near-term revenue. And certainly, uh, fully uh, fully autonomous vehicles fit that category. Uh, as was pointed out, this isn't GM. This is GM's cruise automation subsidiary, which uh, now has a market cap of over, I think, 13 or 14 billion dollars. And it's good because uh, GM's cruise automation is one of the two companies that's acknowledged to be an absolute leader in the autonomous vehicle development field, the other being Waymo. Uh, and uh, the Japanese automakers have been a little bit slow, especially Honda, a little bit slow to embrace the development of fully autonomous cars. And this is a quick move which gets them up to the first tier of whatever's going on there. And uh, it's, it's advantageous to both companies because, and it's especially advantageous to GM, first of all, because it cr increases the market cap of cruise automation and gives it additional capital, et cetera. But um, there are so many demands on automakers these days for uh, you know, uh, plug-in hybrids, fully electric vehicles, uh, autonomous yeah. vehicles, semi-autonomous vehicles. There's not enough engineering manpower to go around. Huh. And what this will permit, uh, with Honda committing a certain number of its engineers to the project, uh, it can be realized a lot quicker. Jim, how do you see this market shaping up, looking, looking out in a few years? And how many players will there be? In other words, is, is there a need for every single car company to have their own autonomous system? Or is everybody just going to partner up like this? Absolutely, there's a need for everyone to be investing. There's a lot of investments that are being made, like a roulette table, and what technology and, and what company is going to survive. But the fact of the matter is, there is going to be a significant growth in the popularity of these vehicles. Short term, it's going to be taxis, uh, ride-sharing services, commercial delivery vans. But long term, it'll be much more in, involved in the entire industry. And what's happening is that it's, it's not driven just by the, the need for technology, but for, from customers' point of view, for safer vehicles, less traffic, and for people that can't drive, there's a market out there for it. There are a number of these companies that are investing, and the fact of the matter is, this is really good for the industry, and it's growing the new technology and new jobs for the future that will be taking the place of the traditional auto companies in the next 15, 20 years. Jim, a question I always ask on this topic, uh, always think about on this topic is, will there be a huge first mover advantage? Whoever gets this right first, will they suddenly dominate the auto market in a way that hasn't happened when simply an automaker brings out a new car? That's no. a, great, a great question, well, Wilford. Sorry, I, Jim, continue. I, OK, I, it's a great question, Wilford. I think that there is an advantage if it's done the right way. Toyota did that with the Prius, for example, in hybrids. But it isn't one that you must be the first mover because this technology is going to advance quickly. And as it does, there will be some folks that will be able to come along and, and develop it. But right now, General Motors is clearly one of the leaders, uh, as well as Waymo. The other companies are watching what they're doing, but they're learning from it, and, and they're really expanding the knowledge of AI and other applications to, to this industry. Bob, I wonder if even taking this whole idea of cooperation a step further, whether at some point there will be some kind of industry standard or centralized utility, at least 
for the data or for some kind of software protocols where uh, essentially everybody is operating by the same basic rules. I mean, I'm not sure exactly how this would evolve, but the idea of, of competing ways of going about this, uh, if everyone's going to go semi-autonomous, uh, seems like maybe not the most efficient. Well, well, look, first of all, there's going to be two kinds of autonomous vehicles. Uh, outside of the main metropolitan areas of the world, out in the suburban and rural areas, people will continue to buy cars just uh, from dealers, just as they have been for the last hundred years. And some of those will be autonomous, so where you can, you'll be able to cruise from uh, New York to Chicago without touching the steering wheel. That's one kind of autonomy, and that's one where multiple systems can coexist. But when you get into the <coughs> metropolitan areas, those will be dominated basically by robo-taxis. And privately owned vehicles, be they human-driven or autonomous, will not be permitted into the city because the purpose is fast traffic flow and no congestion. So you'll be able to drive your vehicle to the city outskirts, park it in a lot, and then take your autonomous vehicle for your travel inside the city. Now, it's clear that while there may be, let's, you know, let's project into the future and say the two dominant players are going to be Waymo and Cruise Automation slash GM plus its partners. Those, those vehicles will all have to, while they, the internal controls and the internal software in the cars may be different, but the way they operate in the urban environment, what signals they respond to, how they react, how they're being kept track of by the central computer, that is going to have to be common. And it's just like today we have common emission rules and common fuel economy rules and each, each manufacturer can devise various ways to meet them, but the rules of how, what the end result is, that's going to have to be commonized and that's why uh, the entire automobile industry is starting to discuss how do we make this happen and they're also talking to regulators around the world because the yep. whole thing is going to have to come, to, the whole thing's going to have to result in one gigantic system that operates for everybody.